So let's talk a little bit about some of the new concepts in LabVIEW related to how vision is, um, is used. The LabVIEW vision enables you to recreate image files um, and also ways for managing those files. I'll show you shortly uh, how to, how to uh, find those VIs and how they can be used. There's, there are many built-in functions for analyzing images and image files. It also, how to acquire images uh, using the iMac software. And if you recall when we started talking about data acquisition, um, you had to have uh, DAX software. Now you need to think about image acquisition as well. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about acquisition of, of images using cameras. And um, uh, you know, our, our goal is really just a brief introduction to how, you know, what, what a vision-based measurement system might look like and using it especially to track object motion. If you've loaded all the um, right software, you, you're going to try to do this on your own. You need to have your uh, installment of LabVIEW include the Vision de Development Module as well as Vision Acquisition Software and make sure you also download the iMac drivers. The, and so when you do that, you, you'll you have um, these uh, menus that appear in Vision in under Vision in Motion, uh, NIMAC as well as NIMAC uh, DX, which are direct show type cameras. And um, there's also these Vision utilities in image processing. These are lower level VIs where you could manage files and so on. And uh, the one one of the uh, sets of VIs that we'll look at are under this machine vision menu item, and I'll uh, show you some examples of that shortly. Um, the vision utilities again are are used for creating and manipulating images. The image processing has low-level VIs. You can do pixel manipulation, those kinds of things. And again, the machine vision introduces a little bit higher level processing of uh, images. And one of them that we'll take a uh, particular take advantage of is one called count and measure objects. And as I was showing you with the uh, particular needle, the way we've configured it, it, it uh, it's so that we have an object moving against a white background. And so this VI uh, is, it turns out to be very convenient for tracking that object, and I'll show that to you shortly. I'm um, going to kind of move through these quickly. You can look at these slides on your own, this summarizes some of these. Let me show you this example. So this VI, reading an image file, is actually an example that's that you can find uh, within the LabVIEW examples. If you look under the finding examples, um, I have it here. And let me open the minimize some of these. So the read image file is uh, very simple. I'm going to bring in the context help so you can see what each of these VIs. First two, the first one here is just the load image dialog. As you can see, this is it gets file info. So this is going to prompt you to in, to to look for a file within your file structure. Um, get image file creates uh, the uh, memory for that image to be brought in and then this this VI actually reads the file and and the key thing is is, is you now create this new uh, information this new line this new data type as you can see is a new data a, a type of wire it's an image and if you see it's sent to this um, terminal and that's actually on the front panel is a uh, display for that image. You can on the front panel. You can also find the front panel VIs on for vision, and you can see you can display images in different ways. Um, and so that's that. But then, so all this VI does is opens it, visualizes the image, and then trashes that memory to make room for it. It's already displayed on the front. So let me just run this very quickly. Uh, I've got it uh, opening to a couple of different files here. This is some kind of micrograph that was in the original LabVIEW file structure. And as you can see, it's uh, a, a, it's actually a color. It's, if you look uh, on this image display, and we'll look at more of these shortly, it shows you the size of the uh, picture. I'm going to show you, if you click over here, um, you can see that the numbers are changing. This shows the r red, green, blue uh, uh, levels and also this uh, shows you the uh, pixel location, right? So uh, wherever I put my cursor, that's telling you what the location is. 
32 bit image, else it's 512 by 256. If you go come up here, it should be 00, zero. down here, it should be 512, but it's because the image is bigger than the display. So if you right click on here and say zoom to fit, you can actually see that the image can be uh, shown completely. So down here you have 512 or so by 256, right? So uh, that's that for that example, just to show you bring an image in, now you can do, do things with it. All right, so that slide just summarizes that little example. And um, this is an example that had been previously in, uh, found in LabVIEW as well. It shows you, you, know, you can read parts in, uh, images of parts and different uh, um, applications where you can imagine you might use something like this to interrogate uh, uh, parts that are being made. You might have, you can actually do pattern matching. So you, for example, might teach it the right pattern for this uh, cutout here and then you could be testing the parts as they come through an assembly line and make sure that they're all been uh, fabricated correctly and so on. Um, and one of the nice things about just reading the images in this way and, and using your cursor to kind of interrogate the images that you can, again, find out how big the image is, you can look at intensity levels and so on. See if you have to manipulate the image anymore. Um, okay, so that's when we're talking about machine vision, that usually consists of six different areas and you might have sensing, pre-processing, where you're looking at the image and maybe trying to clean it up. Segmentation involves partitioning the image into objects of interest. And then maybe a descriptive type uh, step where um, you might try to actually distinguish between objects. And then there's higher level steps of recognition, actually trying to associate it with, with different types of known objects. And then interpretation, again, much higher level where you're actually assigning meaning. So sometimes these are referred to as low, medium, and high levels uh, with these associated numbers. And here we're really just touching on some of these concepts and using the eyes that have been built that are associated with each of these. And uh, for, for example, the, the low level vision usually involves primitive type processes, acquiring uh, images and so on. There's really no intelligence there, it's just straight acquisition. Um, the medium level is you're extracting images, characterizing it. So finding objects, for example, in an image and, and distinguishing them from one another, that's something that we're going to do. Once you get to the higher level, which we won't do, that's where you're trying to do perception and cognition. So if you have, say, a vision system on um, an autonomous vehicle that's being used to, do, to help you uh, steer the vehicle to avoid obstacles and so on, there you're really doing a lot of uh, more uh, high level processing. That's why there's a lot more uh, computer power that's required as well to, to do vision, uh, for, especially for some of this process, and because the files tend to be quite large. Okay, You can find different references that have some of these basic concepts, uh, books on vision, some on robotics, and so on. Um, in order to find the uh, machine vision VIs, you know, when you open up the menu item, you'll see if you've installed the vision and motion VIs, uh, you find the machine vision there and you can see that you've got several sub menus in here. And um, again, there's a lot in here. We're not going to touch on all of these. We're going to use some of these uh, in some of the examples and in some of the work that we do in the lab. But there's a, there's a lot here for, for us to, to, uh, to look at. We're only going to do I'm going to talk a little few, uh, about a few of these and show you how we use them, show you some examples. Okay. Now first, let me just show you that one of the important ones here is a, it's really, you, know, you have an image, you want to maybe identify a region where, where you want to focus your attention uh, and process there. And so this one's called the IMAX Select Region of Interest. Here, when you, when you send the image here, you also prompt the user to have an input and and, and physically, the user might draw, uh, help draw out a, tri a rectangle, say, where, um, where you want to look at, where you want to analyze the image, and that information on that rectangle can be sent to other VIs. Okay, it's very simple. Um, another one that's very useful, the light meter, what that does is it takes an image, processes it, gives you histogram data, for example, so you can interrogate uh, his the uh, intensity levels. Uh, say you have a grayscale image, and you want to only look at certain um, pixel intensities, this helps you identify what are those actual values. And uh, you can do it uh, manually the way I was showing you, or you can use this analysis here with a histogram to help you focus in on 
on the right intensity levels. And then when we look at some of the higher level, the, the count and measure objects VI, this one you would send it, for example, a search rectangle like from that uh, region of interest VI. You send it that image, and you have to, uh, I'm going to show you how some of the settings that you have to uh, indicate here uh, refers to threshold levels, for example, sizes of objects you want to look for. And uh, what this little VI does is it kicks out uh, in this objects array, an array of, of objects that contain a cluster of different types of object information, including XY position, for example, of an object, the size of the, uh, the area of the object, and pixel uh, size, and number of pixels, and so on. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay. Um, so this is a really nice VI for our purposes. Note that this VI and, uh, requires that you analyze the image in grayscale. So another VI that we'll make use of is this cast image VI. What it does is you send it, for example, a uh, color image, and you can tell it to give you the image type out as a grayscale before you pass it on to process with some of the other vision VI. So here shows a snippet here of a grab, uh, pass that image to the cast image, and then this is a grayscale now that you can then process with the machine vision VIs. So here's an example of how you might use the finding objects um, VI. You know, you might have an image here. I just drew a bunch of dark uh, images on a white sheet and asked the count objects uh, VI to look at this region and to find certain size objects, right? I said uh, only find objects that are no smaller than three pixels, but also no larger than a total of 100 pixels inside. And what it does then is, for example, it, it, it uh, ignores these, but it finds these, and also it looks at a threshold level. And what is threshold? That's, that's the intensity level of the object. So it's ignoring anything that's white. So for example, it ignored this, this spot here, right? Um, because, because, because it was uh, higher intensity than 100. Um, and show you threshold. The ways to find you know, the brighter objects have high intensity, which means, for say, if you have an 8-bit grayscale, that would be up to 255 if it was white, and the dark object here would be 0, for example, for an 8-bit image. The darker objects have lower values, uh, and the brighter objects have higher values. Okay, So threshold is important as one of the settings on the uh, count objects VI. Um, if you if you have an object and you need to determine, say you're trying to tune your vision setup, uh, one of the, something that's helpful is to use a light meter. You don't have to do this because you can do it manually, but the histogram shows that a lot of those pixels are primarily a high intensity, you know, gray to white. Uh, very few of them are down here being much darker, but this tells you, hey, anything above 100, I want to ignore. I only want to look at 100 or, or lower for my dark objects. Okay, so a uh, histogram can kind of help you visualize that. 